Hello everyone. Want to know how to take fantastic flower pictures just like this? Stick around and I'll show you how. So hello everyone and welcome to another video. You may wonder what I'm doing in the kitchen and how I'm going to shoot landscapes standing in the kitchen. Now I haven't taken up cooking, I'll leave that to Gordon Ramsay. If you've been following my channel, you'll know that I've been working my way through this book, 52 Assignments in Landscape Photography. So now that everyone's stuck indoors, I picked up the book had a flip through, and lo and behold, assignment number 31, flower power. I used to do an awful lot of flower photography before I started doing the landscape thing and got the landscape bug. Uh, you'd always find me out in the yard and out in the garden there, photographing flowers and doing some various things. So I thought I'd try and share one of those uh, things with you today. So I've got some flowers here, as you can see. Uh, even stole one of the other half's orchids here, but she doesn't know that. Now. So uh, I do know that. <laughs> or maybe she does. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Um, so yeah, I thought what I'd do is we're going to have a bit of fun with the flowers. Uh, I'm going to make two videos. So the first one is going to be something a little bit different, uh, something you may not have seen before. I'm going to give it a try and show you how I do it. You're going to create some stunning flower pictures just like the one you're seeing on your screen now. So hopefully, even if you're uh, restricted to access to to various places where you can go shopping or whatever. Hopefully your grocery store is still open and you can get most of this stuff at your grocery store. Here's a few things you're gonna need. A bottle of distilled water, maybe two bottles. Some flowers. Um, most grocery stores are open for groceries. Most of them sell flowers. Grab a bunch. Uh, you can even pretend they're for your wife but you can actually steal them for, for photographing. Um, and some plastic containers. Any shape, any size, whatever you like. Even plastic drinks cups, anything like that will work fine. Uh, so yeah, first thing, select your flower. Uh, I think what I'm going to do, there's one that broke off here, this guy here, little Gerber daisy. Now, there's, oops, spilled the water. There's various ways to do this guys, some people put a weight on and, and weight them to the bottom. I tend to turn them upside down, put them in a dish. So, done that, I just cut the stalk, just level with the top of the the container there, maybe just a little bit more. Yeah, just about level with the top of the container. And I'll take my distilled water. Gets a bit messy too sometimes, so make sure you clean up after or your wife will get angry. A yeah, good dollop of water in there. And then bit of tape and just on top of the stalk there and there you go that should hold it in place sometimes you might just have to squeeze the tape together there make sure the petals are under the water you can try and position it sometimes it helps if you can angle the flower a bit if you can it's going to move anyway it's going to settle but if you can angle it somehow, what we're going to do now, take it over to the freezer, place it gently in the freezer there, uh, and usually overnight is good enough, but I usually leave it uh, a full day, a full 24 hours or something like that, at least, sometimes a bit longer. And you can do it with any size of flower, any size of container, even like a big hydrangea bloom, if you've got a container and a freezer big enough. Um, obviously that's going to take a lot longer to freeze, but just have fun. Various containers, various flowers. Um, let's see, do another one here. Um, All right, so I'll show you how to do the first one of the Gerber Daisy. Now I'm gonna gonna steal the orchid. Got to love these Phalaenopsis orchids. They're absolutely amazing. Make fantastic house plants. We got a house full of them here. I think she's probably got 30, 35 or something like that now. I did use a clean pair of pruners, I don't want to be spreading disease from plant to plant or anything like that, so it's from my gardening background I guess. <laughs> I've just been busted, <laughs> stealing an arctic flower. <laughs> Shit happens. <laughs> so anyway, now that I'm busted it doesn't really matter. Anyway, same same idea guys, 
Here's a, a nice orchid flower. Like I say, these people think orchids are difficult to grow. Can be easier. Go down to your supermarket and buy your wife an orchid and steal the flowers. This is a much bigger container. Um, sometimes you can get a a bigger container. You get more of that the wa frozen water droplets around it, and it really adds to the image. Um, so same thing. Across the bowl here. There we go. And I'll stick this one in the freezer beside the other one. Uh, there you go. And that's it guys. What could be simpler? So guys, you may be wondering why I used distilled water and not just regular tap water or any other kind of water. Don't know the technical term for it, but when you try this and you take them out of the freezer and you look at the results, you'll see that all the little bubbles as they freeze in distilled water they leave these trails almost like star trails through the ice uh, and that's what really gives the effect um, only happens with distilled water uh, sparkling water all that kind of stuff tap water doesn't work trust me i've tried it um have seen some people try distilled water and putting a few drops of uh, oil in the water to give a different kind of a effect uh, i've never done it so i don't know what i have tried is a couple of drops of food coloring um, and that works pretty pretty well too. Um, the results can be a bit hit and a miss because you've got to use just a tiny drop of food colouring uh, or it just destroys the whole image. But have fun and experiment. I'm just going to jump over to the freezer here guys. Uh, there's a couple in the freezer that in true Blue Peter fashion I had done a couple of days ago and they should be ready to come out and I'll just show you what they look like. Welcome back. Uh, here's two of the frozen flowers that I've just taken out of the freezer. Um, like I said, it's important to let them thaw naturally. Do not pour water on them or hot water or, or try and force them out of the containers. They're just going to split and spoil the image. My advice is just give them a few minutes, five minutes, just to kind of thaw out a little bit before you start to tease them out of the containers. So guys, I'm just going to show you a couple of things that we're going to need for taking the pictures. Um, a flashlight, I use a, an LED work light here. Uh, a piece of glass, this is an old glass chopping board that uh, I've commandeered for photography purposes. A piece of tin foil to act as a reflector. Um, a rag, because as you're taking the pictures, they're going to start to melt and you're going to get a bit of mess so good idea to have a rag handy just to mop up as you go along uh, and that's it really um, what we do guys is we take the take the flashlight just bear with me a second you stick it in the kitchen sink yep in the kitchen sink um, the sink itself will act as a reflector take a piece of glass just place it over the top of the, the sink there and you may have to move the light around a little bit. Uh, we don't need a foil right now. And then basically what you're going to do is you're going to take your, once you've taken it out of the container, you're going to place it above the light and you're going to manipulate it. You're going to move it around a little bit uh, until you get the, the composition. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use a tripod there and I'm going to stick my, my trusty Nikon D90 and it's got a little 40 millimeter macro lens on there. Um, and I'll use the I'll use the Fuji to do the video. Um, I just don't have a, a macro lens for the Fuji yet. I will get one, um, but the old Nikon is uh, pretty trusty, and uh, I've managed to get some great images with this little lens. So that's, that's about it. Um, I'm gonna get set up guys, uh, and uh, then we'll take some pictures. So there you go guys. Um, this should hopefully give you some idea of my setup here. I've got the tripod here next to the sink. Uh, still just gonna give this a few minutes, uh, just to kinda thaw out. It's just starting to melt on the top there. Uh, and then, like I said, the light, 
go under there and you can see it going up there um, so that's going to be how we take the picture uh, I've got the Nikon D90, the 40mm macro it's on the tripod reflector if we need it um, yeah and that's <laughs> that's how it's done so guys as you can see I've dropped the centre column down a little bit just to get a bit closer and I'm pretty much as close as I can get with this lens here uh, and I've got a much better composition uh, I've been turning the chunk of ice around to get just to, to position the flower where I want it uh, this time I've manually focused still at ISO 200 and F18 um, it's giving me a second exposure um, I'm going to use a reflector here for this shot there you go ISO 200 uh, after priority F18 got the uh, timer on and a one second exposure and I'm going to just not doing a hell of a lot, but it is doing a lot. I can see it reflecting on there. And there you go. Uh, I'll play around, do a few more. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'll play around, do a few more, and we'll we'll see what we get. I just picked another flower there, guys. Uh, one of the Gerbera daisies. Um, same one, same with this one. It's very cloudy. Uh, the way it's frozen, um, you're not seeing an awful lot of the flower, but that's okay. Um, getting those trails from the ice, so some it's a bit more abstract you're looking. Uh, you you can't really tell it's a flower there. All you'll see is a pink background with these trails. Um, focusing is critical, so you're going to have to try and focus on one of the little uh, trails of ice, um, which can be really difficult, but we'll give it a go. Don't be afraid to try focus in different places. You could probably even try focus stacking, but I'm not sure how successful it would be. It's not bad. So guys, as you can see, um, the one I said it wasn't going to work, the in the, the, the tall cup if you like, as it thawed out in the sink here, I could see a composition starting to develop. Um, it's not brilliant, it, it's kind of, there's a couple of petals sticking up and a couple folded down towards the front of the frame. Uh, and I think I, I think I got it. So again, we'll just uh, fire off a couple of shots and see what we get. It is hitting the miss guys, but it is fun. Trust me. So my ISO 200, F22, I've got the timer on. Um, you got that, you got that quick as well guys, that's the other thing, because the ice is continuously melting. Your, your image is moving. We'll try that, see what we get. Looks okay. There is a bit of a harsh light coming from the from the flashlight, so play around with your your images, guys, and move the light source a little bit. Uh, you you do tend to get some hot spots with the light. Um, if you just position your light slightly different, move it around, or just placing your hand even uh, can certainly help cut those out. Uh, yeah, there you go. So guys, I'm not going to talk you through every single image. Uh, the video is already long enough; it would it would go on forever. But I hope you get the I hope you get the idea. I'm going to play around with a few more, uh, and hopefully you'll see them as uh, a gallery at the end. Um, I'll put up the bad ones as well as the good ones, guys, just so you get an idea that it is really a hit and a miss. Um, I've taken a couple more out the freezer here. Uh, one is uh, another little Gerbera daisy, uh, so a few minutes before that's ready. And another one is a little uh, Christmas cactus, which seems to think it's Christmas and it's flowering just now. So, um, going to try that one. So guys, sometimes it does work for you and you will get the perfect flower. So the little Christmas cactus I was talking to you about, 
got it propped up here on a towel. It's absolutely perfect. Uh, I've stuck the light back under there um, and it's just given a nice glow. Because it's in a shallow container though, this edge here, um, it, I'm going to have to crop the, the image. It's just not big enough to fill the frame. Uh, but it looks really awesome. Um, so I'm going to try a couple with the light, without the light and the reflector. Uh, but I've got to work quick because it is melting. So it's still at, F, uh, still at ISO 200. I'm at F22 on aperture priority. just to check the focus yeah, it looks pretty good so guys it looks like the little Christmas cactus that I showed you earlier there is going to be the star of the show uh, you saw me taking a couple of pictures but I did manage to get a bit closer and I've pretty much filled the frame with it uh, and it looks pretty spectacular if I've got my focusing right this is going to be the star of the show I still do have the orchid in the in the freezer um, and that was the one I was hoping I could get a, a really keeper of an image um, so I'm going to play around for a bit, uh, less talking, do a few more of this, this is, this is stunning, I'm really liking this. I've played around so there you go guys, that's pretty much how I do these frozen flower shots. Um, been a bit of a long process doing this video, uh, but I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I still haven't taken the orchid out yet, so I'm going to do that and you'll hopefully see the image at the end. But look at this little guy, this one turned out pretty neat too. This little Gerbera daisy that was in the little tiny square container there. Um, I think I got a few nice shots of that one. Um, it is hit and miss. You just got to play around with it, guys. You're going to get a lot more failures than you are successes. Um, but have fun with it. And uh, you never know what you'll get. So, guys, this time I've got the orchid out of the freezer. And uh, got it in a bowl here just to steady it a little bit. It didn't turn out as good as some of the other ones. Um, this is going to be a very abstract picture. You can't even tell it's an orchid. Just the way the water froze, um, it happens. But uh, I think I can get a couple of images out of it anyway. Uh, but you'll see them on the screen. A little bit disappointed with this one. I was kind of hoping the orchid would be the star of the show. Um, we'll try taking a few images of it. But as I say, they're going to be rather abstracty. Um, playing more with the textures and the ice and the colours and stuff like that. Rather than actually recognizing it as a flower so i'm still at iso 200 guys um aperture priority and i'm down to stop down to f f29 um as i say this one is going to be a bit abstract you you're pretty much just seeing a few textures nice a little bit of yellow and a little bit of pink as well um we'll see what we get I think that about wraps it up for today guys. I uh, hope you've enjoyed these uh, these flower images. Um, the video is a bit long so I do apologise for that. A little bit of a disclaimer, no orchids were harmed in the making of this film. <laughs> so all that's left to say is uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Cheers for now. Don't forget to hang around for those bloopers coming right up after the gallery.
Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna intrude. Oh, oh, oh. I'm gonna jump over to the. <laughs> hmm. In plu. Uh, uh. You gotta step away for a minute. Uh, let them thaw naturally. Do not try putting water on them. They're gonna crack and destroy your your images. Once in a while you might get lucky and the crack might be in a, a nice position shows you gives you some nice effects. That didn't sound right. <laughs> I was trying to <laughs> <laughs> the crack might be in a nice <laughs> They're gonna crack and destroy the image. Was that better? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in the right place. So guys, sometimes you do get lucky. So guys, sometimes you get lucky. So sometimes guys, you get lucky. So sometimes guys, you'll get quite lucky.